Thank you for trusting me to come around again. Uh, last week was quite a challenge for me. Be, uh, not only did we have a little bit of technical problems, not blaming anyone, but uh, I just felt like, well, I, I want to honor the fact that we are coming to the communion table. And when I did look up, like I'm looking up now, and we're at, you know, I went, oh my. So uh, I, I got my mind off. Uh, but I still left my Bible intact. <laughs> And I still got 10 points of reference for us to maybe consider today alone. But uh, in all of that, uh, I'm trying in, in serving the Lord and serving you. I am wanting to uh, help us understand a foundation today. And that is from our core verse of Micah 6, 8. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? But to, uh, I have, guess I have to look, <laughs> act justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And to me, my thought process was, well, where has God shown us or how has God shown us? And I unveiled the beginning of that last week to say that God has shown us here, which is God's word. And he has shown us and revealed, of course, through his son, Jesus Christ as well. So as Romans says, we're really without excuse. We really can't say, well, I didn't know because he has brought it forth and it is clear. And it, to me, in the study of it, it is easy to understand what it is that God wants. But just like with anything, if you never go to the source if you don't have an opportunity to allow your life to be infused, I'll use that word, saturated by and become wholly absorbed, then it's only one of many options. And if we're out of options, don't worry, there are a lot of options being made available to us constantly through our eyes, through our ears through the media that we watch, either on a screen or what we allow through our ears, all of that. We're, we're being bombarded, as it were, and saturated. Hearing me? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> so for that reason, uh, today might seem a little bit uh, a race to, I want to establish some of what the writers of Scripture said about God's Word. And the first one we're going to look at comes from Deuteronomy, and it's chapter 6. And the writer of Deuteronomy was a man named Moses. And in his instructions and in his guidance for us, he says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and I'm, I wanted us to get the context by looking at 1 through 9. These are the commands and decrees and the laws the Lord your God directed you to teach, to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all of his decrees and commandments that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Anybody want to enjoy a long life? Yes, okay. So these things aren't given just to make God's thumbprint on us. They're given that we might have wholeness and life and goodness, right, Joe? And then he goes on and he says, Hear, O Israel, <coughs> sorry, hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, verse 4, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Why is that? Well, it 
reemphasizes again and again and again. It's part of your conversation. It's part of your life. Um, and so that's, that's where Moses was saying, God has shown us and given us this great commandment. Of course, it's n- uh, the commandment of loving God. And did you know that on your church's website, you reference Deuteronomy 6 through Jesus' teaching in Luke, but you reference it back and said, this is what we as a church are about. So, of course, in your search, you do want somebody that cares about God's word. Okay? All right. Enough middling. All right. (laughs) Thank you, Mike. The second writer that I'd like to explore a little bit is actually David. David had lots of both experience and time ruling Israel as a king, of course, but also being a shepherd, being one who had, quote, time on his hand, and having time on his hand meant that he was developing a relationship with the Lord. And many of his writings are where we go to look. They're called the Book of Psalms or Psalter. That book has so much in it alone that we can go there and practically find every point of need expressed by David as the writer. And, of course, then his son Solomon was the one who gave us the book of Proverbs and Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and all of that. So what did David have to say about God's word? Well, one of the longest passages and probably the chapter with the most verses is Psalm 119. And I'm going to read it from... No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but we're going to have to take some snapshots of it. And the first snapshot I'd like us to look at is Psalm 119. And if you would consider looking at just how he opens up the book. Blessed are they whose ways are blameless who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who keep his statutes and seek him with all of their heart. They do nothing wrong. They walk in his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all of your commands i will praise you with an upright heart as i learn your righteous laws and i will obey your decrees how can a young man keep his way pure how by living according to your word there's the recipe later on in psalm 119 all the way over to um Let me go over here to 112, verse 112. David said something interesting here that captured my mind in reading it. And he said, my heart is set on keeping your decrees or your laws or your commandments. You could put lots of other points of speech in there. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. So this isn't just an exercise, if, if you'll if you'll understand with me i'm not just talking about us reading alone but where the reading becomes a part of us and it becomes part of who we say what we say and who we are and how we live all of that is the saturation point of god's word and that's what i wanted us to capture when something becomes a part of your heart jesus even said out of the innermost being right Jesus even identified that that it's not what comes out of a person that is bad, but what is in the person, what is in their heart, what is in their innermost being. So that's where saturation has to happen the most. Are you with me? Okay, thank you. Now you can, no, I'm just kidding. And so uh, one other look in Psalm uh, Psalm 119, still over at verse 133. David says of God's word, may it direct my footsteps, direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. So, you know, the other familiar passage of God's word being uh, 
a, a lamp onto our path and a light, uh, I mean a lamp on our feet and a light onto our path. So that's where he's saying, I, I want God's word to be influencing me. Of all of the things that you could be praying for the church right now in the search committee's actions and in the process of bringing about uh, who God wishes to help lead Valley Bible Church, of all of the things that you could be praying, you could be praying God's word. You could be praying that, 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 that whoever that person is will be, a, a, be someone that, that lives by, is guided by, and directed by God's word and that uh, they can make it plain. And that's even what the, what the committees ask you to evaluate on. How about one more from Psalm 119 before we go to another writer? And that's Psalm 119. And... 149. And that says, Hear my voice in accordance with your love. Renew my life, O Lord, according to your law. So God's word helps us also to improve on that relationship with the Lord. And improving on that relationship with the Lord, it actually becomes we grow closer rather than further apart. Okay? Let's go over to some of the New Testament writers. John's Gospel, John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. This is probably familiar to you. One of the ladies, I don't know that she's here, came up to me after service last week and said that she had been instructed uh, through teaching through uh, uh, the Multnomah School of the Bible, one of the speakers, about that, that with God's, with God's, with regard, with regard to God saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. It said, if you, the, the Multnomah speaker, she su- told me who it was, if you can't agree with that, then you, you've, got, you've got to just kind of stop at that moment and say, when am I going to allow the faith of what God's word says to me to have, to have a rule and effect? When am I going to say, yes, I believe it? And so if you can't understand, not just understand, if it can't be part of the core belief of your heart and life and of following Jesus and Christ and God, that you believe that God is the Word and the Word was with God, then you, you just got to accept some of this by faith. Does that make sense? We accept it by faith. When, when If I was to come over here and, and sit on, on Mike Ann's stool that he plays on, I, I can look at it from this distance right now and say, that's a pretty sharp-looking stool. It's a little bit flat on top, but yeah, it, it looks pretty good. But unless I go over and I actually, sorry, this won't work on video, Jared. Let me get it. There we go. But unless I actually go to it and then I put my uh, disposition on it, <laughs> and am I really trusting in it even yet? I'm sitting on it, but I'm not really trusting in it. I'm not trusting in it. I'm not having faith in it alone until I put all of my being on this stool. And that, that's just a, a core anchor of what I believe in when it comes to trusting Jesus. We're not just giving him a part, like I'll give you this much and I'm keeping this much. We've got to give him all. Does that, does that help some of you understand it, it's just anchor in my, it's one of those anchors that, that uh, Nancy and I, who Nancy's here this today, that Nancy and I grew up with when we were young believers, is they just really helped us to understand that we, we've got to trust in this thing that we're learning about, uh, this thing and this person, Jesus Christ. Are you still with me? Okay, we got five hours left to go, so... Uh, let's jump over to another writer, Paul, and what he has to say by going over to 2 Timothy chapter 3, 14 through verse 17. 
Paul was instructing Timothy, Timothy and he said, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know from those from whom you have learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And when the God's word through the writer of Paul to Timothy, says that God's word, the scripture, is God-breathed. That means he is the source. He is the author. He is the one who has watched over and guarded, even in a process in which church leaders were watching. How, How do we put together all of these writings? What do we look for and all of that? And eventually they came up with This is God's word from Genesis to Revelation. This is God's word. This is his declared word. And it is this word, not just in English, that has been translated in many languages of the world. And that's, is that random? No, it's it's a source. It's a lifeline. And so I, 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 I can't hardly put into words how I understand that God's word is our source. So when Satan came on that first morning to say, or I don't know that it was a morning, but he came and he he said, you know, has God really said? Well, yes. For us, yes. For Eve, mm, yes. But not all of this. But nonetheless, she had. One other writer, and I do not know, Uh, I know what maybe some of church history says about the book of Hebrews, often attributed to Paul, though most uh, aren't sure. But in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it talks about the word of God. I hope that you visited this before and heard it and seen it and understand. For the word of God is living and active sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. God's word is sharper than. Uh, I'm not a real fan of sharp things have to be honest. One of the young men that came up to the camp that we were at yesterday uh, had his hunting knife with him and trying to show me, and I'm, mm, that's, that's nice. Um, but I understand by the writer of, in Hebrews here that, that God's word is sharper than a double-edged sword, and it has an ability to do amazing things. If you really wanted to get to the core of something, God's Word, through His Spirit, has the ability to find that core. If it's if it's maybe a mystery to others, right? And we live in a really technologically advanced world. Medically, they can find things amazingly that even the human eye doesn't reveal. But God's word is even more discerning, more dividing, not divisive for how we are apart, but but able to really get to the core. And that for that, I am thankful. Okay, last one, and I'm one minute over, so we're okay. As long as I get it wrapped up. Revelation chapter 22. I selected from verse 6 to verse 11. 
And the angel said to me, John the Revelator, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servant the things that must soon take place. Verse 7, red letter edition for those that have that. Jesus' words, behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. Then I, verse 8, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and with all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of the book because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. That's an interesting invitation. Let him who is vile continue to be vile and let him who does right continue to do right and let him who is holy continue. Continue to be holy. So he's just saying, we we're, we've got a, we we've got all that we need. Let's take it and allow it to have that place of penetration, deepness with us. So, chapter Micah six a. He has shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. So if if you have no knowledge of that. After today, you have an exposure of knowledge of how has God shown us, where has he instructed us, how does he want us to live. And then next time I'm with you, which is two weeks from today, we will walk through the rest of Micah 6, 8, which was his concrete ways of how we demonstrate faith living and action points to our community and to our world. So that's where we'll go. So uh, let me say a prayer over the church, and I know we have a closing prayer coming as well. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this morning's gathering that we have experienced and that we understand and have. I thank you that with our lives and even the day-by-day interaction of our lives and living, we might know and we might not even know what the next moment holds. But in all of that, Lord, we know that your word is true. And if we're not convinced of that, help reveal it to us. Make it clear, even supernaturally, just put things in our place and in our way that we understand that. And then in understanding how we are to live, may you continue to guide us every day, moment by moment. And in that process, Lord, may we be diligent to know your word, to study your word, to live by your word, and to share your word. And then lastly, Lord, I just pray for the the search that is going on. May you continue to bring clarity and a sense of strength to the process. And may you be able to, at the other side and at the other end, get all glory and praise for your chosen and for your work. In Jesus' name, amen.